Hello and welcome to It Is Written Canada. Today we're going to be talking to Lorna Spencer. Lorna is a mother, a homemaker, a uh, woman of God, a woman with many talents, including writing, and she has written a book called I'm Still Standing. She's telling her personal story. And uh, Lorna is with us today, and I'm looking at your book here, Lorna, and it's an amazing uh, title. Uh, we've heard those words before, but what you're standing on there is, is solid rock, and you're in the midst of an ocean. So thank you for joining us, and thank you for being prepared to share your story with us today. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. Well, Lorna, tell us about yourself. So tell yeah. us, who is Lorna Spencer? Lorna Spencer is a Seventh-day Adventist Christian, a woman who has found her worth in Jesus Christ. And as you've said, I am a mother of two young adult daughters. I am an author of the book, I'm Still Standing, a mental health advocate, and an early childhood educator by profession. That's multiple talents. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. Very talented. And lots of responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank so, you. So, Lorna, can you, um, Give us a synopsis of, of your book that you wrote. After my pastor, Dr. Maitland, and my best friend, Tana, uh, continued to bother me about writing a book and having a story, Dr. Maitland gave the title, I Survived. However, that title didn't seem quite fitting. Mm -hmm. And so I prayed about it and came up with the title, I'm Still Standing. And I'm Still Standing is a story of Lauren Gregory, who was a new bride. And she was on the top of the world after getting married. But just two weeks after marriage, her world came crashing down. The man that she married turned out not to be who he claimed to be. He was living a double life, a very maladaptive kind of lifestyle, very outlandish kind of life, lifestyle. He had multiple women, um, including a child that I didn't know about. And after finding out the details of his sordid affairs, um, he didn't tell me, by the way. I had to investigate him to dig to the bottom of the truth. My sister and I are very close. Oh, I feel God. like we do have a very close relationship. I feel like we do butt heads a lot, of course. We're family, families do that. Um, but at the end of the day, we will always, always love each other. We always do have that communication. Um, we basically feed off of each other. If one is down, of course, we'll, we'll try and bring the other one up. and. Yeah, just basically, again, that communication. We are able to talk things through. We're able to really get to the bottom of each other and just understand each other. I feel my mother's situation impacted my life in um, a number of different ways. I would say uh, the biggest impact that it did have on my life is just being able to learn from her experiences, um, just taking exactly what she went through and just applying it to my own relationships and friendships. Um, people can be very deceitful in your life. Um, obviously, my mother was deceived. She wasn't able to see Jones's true colors until later on down the road, um, which is what I was able to take and just apply um, because I was able to um, just study people more in my life, not let them in as easily, um, and really just get to know their true intentions of why they maybe want to be um, around me or just a part of my life. Um, and then also I would say just the stability aspect of it, um, seeing the commitment, seeing my mother and uh, Jones in this commitment, but then not seeing him around um, very often. It was very misleading for me as a young girl, just not being able to see that stability in the relationship. So it was really um, just misleading and confusing for me as watching it growing up. What I've learned is that it's never our fault. Um, you know, we think that it's one thing, and for whatever reason, if we're forcing it, then it takes a different direction. Um, you ha must always trust your intuition. I do not feel like there was a balance in the relationship. I do 100% feel like my mother was the, the breadwinner. She was, she had the pants on, you know. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> she was doing it at all, honestly, like a, like a superwoman and Superman, mm -hmm. um, and effortlessly. And she would, and she would never question it. That's the thing. This is just my mother, right? So, unfortunately, some people prey on that, right? They they see the good in somebody, and they just keep taking, right? Um, and that's that's when we need to take a step back to realize, like, wait a second, like, I really respect myself, but this person doesn't respect me as much. So, something needs to change here, right? Of course. Some things get too far gone and it's easy to stay. We get comfortable and complacent, but we really need to jump on those signs right when we see them. We can't keep lying to ourselves. That's, that's the number one thing, just being honest with yourself. I find that um, sometimes when red flags come up, we, we try to change it to a green flag, <laughs> right? <laughs> because that's just our, our level of perception. Um, what the way that they're treating us we may never do to them or to somebody else so sometimes we just can't comprehend that it's a red flag or that it's even happening the way that it is right so we just allow it to happen because we think maybe it was it was just a mistake they apologize it was a mistake um, it's okay moving forward right but then it, when it becomes repetitive and it's consistent um, then that's when we need to realize that I mean, this, this is not just a red flag, like this is, this is who they are mm -hmm. as a person, right? And um, to fight and flight, really, flight would be it. <laughs> Which is why it is so important to really um, just notice those patterns in people and just um, when they say that it's a mistake, when they say that changes are gonna happen and their actions aren't matching their words, then it's really important to just realize exactly what's going on and um, notice those exact patterns so that you can strive away from them. <laughs> In the book, I am Pastor Moore. I'm the one who did the counseling, premarital counseling, I did the wedding, did baptism, did follow up after the wedding, and tried to mend what was broken. Part of Lorna's transparency that strikes me was the motivation that she received from what was not happening. She had married a man who was anything but transparent. And he was hiding everything. Everything was undercover. This man had a mistress who had a child for him, 14 months old, that he was covering up. So I could see some of that coming out in Lorna saying, mm -mm, I, cannot be I cannot cover up the mess. I've got to be transparent, let the world know who I am and what's happening to me so that in order to receive help, then help can only come if God and the world knows what I'm going through. In the book, I'm Tango. I'm Lorna's best friend. I chose that name because it meant Tana on the go. And I'm always on the go. Being transparent was so important because it allowed others to open their own self. A lot of people are becoming like prisoners within themselves because they're in so much pain. They're walking around with a mask, hiding behind their shame, their hurt, their pain, their rejection. <sighs> Not until you remove the mask will you be able to be true to yourself and to be true to God. In the book, Lorna was incredibly transparent. And I think that as she journeyed with God through this experience, he encouraged her to be transparent for her healing. As Lorna was writing and was being transparent, she had to face certain things about herself. And it's in facing those things that I believe God was 
bringing on the transformation. Transparency is a part of healing. Along the way, there were, you know, heartbreak. There was a pregnancy that came about because of um, a violation from my husband. And I was pregnant with twins. And I wasn't excited about being pregnant after all, you know, how it, it happened. And I didn't know if I could love, you know, the, the child. At that time, I didn't know it was twins. And so I had to pray to God, you know, to ask him to help me to accept my situation and the fact that I was going to be a mother again. And so I fell in love with these uh, babies, but three months after that, I had a miscarriage. And that sent me into the abyss of darkness. I had given up the will to live. Um, I felt as though all hope was gone and prayer was my weapon. Prayer was the key to finding my way back to reality. Mm -hmm. And so that's a synopsis of I'm still standing. You went through quite a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, mm -hmm. this is very, very devastating, mm -hmm. everything you went through. Um, the title, I'm Still Standing, obviously saying this has not destroyed you. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, um, mm -hmm. At times, did it feel like that? Oh, absolutely. There were times when I felt defeated. I was perplexed. I, w I felt as though I was destroyed. And because my life was so wrapped up and tied up in Jones, you know, and wanting to be loved and wanting to be happy, I, you know, when my world fell apart, it hit me hard. And, but the good thing about it is that I knew Christ. I had a relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And although it was difficult and challenging and overwhelming, I still had a glimpse of hope. And I prayed like Hannah and Rachel and Naomi. Prayer became my way of life. Mm -hmm. And so although it was hard, prayer helped me to live. Mm -hmm. Prayer kept me standing. Mm -hmm. You know, Lorna, I read your book and there were many times that I had to put the book down. <laughs> and I'm like, I need to finish this book, but I just can't read anymore. Oh, <laughs> so I had to put it down a little bit. But um, the thing that really stood out to me was the way that you had just mentioned now, that you just hung on to Jesus. Yes. Right through all of this, I was like, this is incredible. It's such an inspiration because you did, you prayed and you, you didn't put God aside. No. You, like he was, he was really your lifeline. My line anchor, yes. And your anchor as you were going through all of this, you know. And I think for me, that was very encouraging because I would read and I would like, how is she going through this? Like, you know, how can someone live a double life and be such a good con artist? Mm -hmm. And you were just, you know, and then it was like, okay, I need to finish it. But I was, I was so angry and so upset, you know, <laughs> but then I need to finish it. But the, the thing that was really inspirational was that, like you said, Jesus was your anchor yes. and he helped you to go through yes. this. And because of him, you're still staying. There. I am. I mm -hmm. am. Yes. And although it was difficult for me to be transparent and put myself out there, you know, knowing that not everyone will get it because I have been scrutinized and, and, and criticized. Um, so I would be foolish to think that everyone would be receptive of my story. However, my message is for hope mm -hmm. because I know what it's like to feel hopeless. I know what it's like to suffer in silence. And I want people to know that with God, they can overcome their circumstances right. only with God. Mm -hmm. And so it's important for them to hold on to Christ. 
So as I was reading the book, I'm Still Standing, there were some themes that really resonated with me. One of them was this stark contrast between brokenness and wholeness. When I was reading about Lorna's pain, her doubt, her frustrations, her moments of hopelessness, it reminded me of brokenness. But it also reminded me of how God transforms. And so I started to see evidence of wholeness. She goes through this poetic expression. I was learning about perseverance in the face of tremendous difficulty. I was learning to love myself and enjoy my own company. I was learning to let go. I was learning to accept my imperfections. Only a whole person can state that confidently. And as she transitioned from brokenness, it reminds me of the song, God bless the broken road that led me straight to you. And when I look at that song and I read this book, ha, it's powerful because we've all had our moments of brokenness. And just as long as we journey the path with God, and in her journey, she made it more about God than her. Uh -huh. That's how she became whole. So there was the brokenness to wholeness. And the only other one that I would add that you can draw from that is this metamorphic experience she went through. I would even go so far as to say Lorna became Lorn. I would go so far as to say in her book, she speaks about the fact that the struggle to come out of the cocoon mm -hmm. empowers the butterfly to fly. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Mm. How else could you not miss that scripture of Romans 8, 28? All things work together for the good to them who love the Lord and are called to his purpose. And so that theme literally screamed out to me, not just the brokenness to wholeness, but that metamorphic experience that she went through. The caterpillar, becoming the butterfly. The chicken she refers to in her book, becoming the eagle. And the Bible talks about one can mount up on wings like eagle. And that's exactly what Lorna had become. So you are in a place where it's just like, Pretty much a nightmare, <laughs> yes. and and you know that you can't you can't trust this man. You call him Jones. That's mm -hmm. not his real name. That's right. It's a pseudonym. Yes. Uh, <laughs> to protect him. Yes. And uh, so he's 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 doing all these things. Did you get help from someone else? My pastor, Doctor Maitland, was very supportive. He was the pastor that officiated our marriage. <laughs> he counseled us for months. Um, but Pastor Maitland was there to support me and guide me. And also my, my best friend, who I refer to as Tango in the book, she was very supportive as well. She carried my pain, she carried my burden. Uh, God is such an awesome God because he knew that I couldn't carry this burden and this pain. If I had to carry the full effect of the pain that was inflicted on me, I don't think I would be here right now. But my best friend carried my pain. She felt my pain. 
there were times when, at the beginning, when the, my, my, my world came crashing down, I didn't shed a tear. I didn't cry. But my best friend cried for me. Mm-hmm. And that just goes to show how God knows best and that he works in such awesome ways. Mm-hmm. You know? So I had the support of my best friend and my pastor and my daughters of course they were supportive you know as supportive as they could be my my mom who is a praying woman of god i knew she was praying for me my adopted mom who is my best friend's mom is also a prayer warrior and i knew that there were people who loved me who were praying for me yes I'm Still Standing is an incredibly powerful book, and there were some things that I took away from my own personal experience looking toward the opportunity of continual growth in the hand of God. It says, I can never sink so low where God's hand couldn't reach me, Lorna says. She also says only God can turn a mess into a message. She says God fought for me and rescued me. And the last is God is everything in every situation. And so as I read the book, for me, these are principles that I want to infuse in my life so that when I face the next challenge, the next trial, the next tribulation, not only do I have scripture, but I have these beautiful gems of truth to help me, which I believe is a part of her mission in sharing her mess for God's powerful message. A survivor, is one who lives after an ordeal. We see Lorna as a survivor. Lorna survived because she was able to claim the promises of God. She latched into those promises. The book is replete with promises from God. But one that has stood out among all the others is that no weapon formed against me will prosper in Isaiah 54. And she saw all the weapons that the devil forged, all the the weapons that the devil formed. And she said, no, by the help of God, they will not prosper. And yet she is still standing because the weapons have not prospered. She is a survivor. So Lorna, you talked about the word intimacy. And I always think of the word intimacy as into me see. And the only one who can allow anyone to see into me is me. And so you're opening your heart to God and you're allowing him to see into you. And he speaks to you through his word and you get get to know him through his word. So is there a Bible text that speaks to you? I mean, there there are many, I'm sure. Uh, Is there one specifically that you can um, share with us? Yes, there is. Uh, Jeremiah 29 verse 11 is my favorite Bible text, and I've I've quoted it several times in the book, for I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you and to give you a bright future. I know that I can trust in God's promises. He's gifted me with two priceless gifts. You know, there are things that money can buy, but it is true that money cannot buy joy. (laughs) and money cannot buy peace. And these are gifts that God has gifted me and I would not trade them for the world. This is my encouragement to you, just trust God, hold on to him, don't let go. So you have gone from not being able to talk about it to writing it, now you're talking about it and as you said, you're inspiring others with it. And uh, so as we close off our program today, I wonder, Lorna, if you could have a word of prayer for us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I would love to. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy holy and thy powerful name. Lord, we are so grateful for your love. 
in spite of the challenges that we face, we know that we can look to you for help. We know that we can come to you for help. You not just care about the, the big things, you care about the small things as well. You care about everything that concerns us. And Lord, as I've shared my story today, I pray, dear God, that it will be a blessing to others and that you will get the glory, the honor, and the praise, that lives will be inspired and transformed, that others will know of your faithfulness to know that they can trust you implicitly. And Lord, we thank you for the victories. We also thank you for the test, Lord, because if there are no tests, there will be no testimony. So we just ask that you give us the strength and the courage to continue to press forward, knowing that you will keep us standing. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Lorna, thank you very much for your wonderful prayer. Thank you for being vulnerable enough to share your story, to write it so that others can be blessed by it and by coming in and sharing with us today here on It Is Written Canada. Thank you so much. God bless you. So Lorna's book, I'm Still Standing, has many more details, as I'm sure you're aware, of her story, and she has made them available for you. You're welcome to purchase them on Amazon.ca, in hardcover, paperback, and on Kindle. Before you go, we would like to invite you to follow us on Instagram and Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel and also listen to our podcasts. And if you go to our website, you can see our latest programs, including our cooking demonstrations, our short spiritual messages entitled Daily Living, and our exercise workouts called Experiencing Life. You too can experience the same kind of strength that Lorna had by putting your trust in Jesus, who himself remained standing when he was tempted by the devil in the wilderness and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. In building her relationship with God, she has discovered that God does not withhold anything good from his children that walk upright with him. And she is walking with him. She also discover her self-worth and to whom she belong. And once you are able to discover those things, it is amazing. So she's not walking alone anymore. She's walking with God. Through her storms, he's in there with her. And that is why she's now changed.